Okay, this is the southwesternmost point in Iceland. This is essentially about where the plate boundary between the North Atlantic and Eurasian plate comes on shore. So again, Iceland is this kind of anomaly because not only is it a divergent plate boundary where the plates are spreading apart, but it also is believed to be a hot spot. So it's a location where uh, a large amount of magma is a larger than normal amount of magma is coming through that divergent plate boundary, presumably from a, a, a mantle plume, a big uh, plume of magma rising from the Earth's mantle feeding all these volcanic eruptions we see here in Iceland. And there's a lot going on in this location. Um, we're gonna spend most of our time back up in the shade of the cliffs there. But real quick, we've got uh, this sea stack out here named Carl. That's actually um, a, a an eroded tuff cone, a type of volcano, and just sort of the neck or the core is what's left of it there. The more resistant part of it is what's left and it's eroded away. Um, way out in the distance, you might be able to make out another island. Uh, that's about nine miles or so out. That's Eldi. And that is a, a similar type of volcano where just the, the central core, the volcanic neck, the more resistant rocks is all that's left and the rest has eroded away. You gotta remember that um, here we are at the coastline now, but 1,000, 5,000, 12, 15,000 years ago, during times of uh, glacial advances, the ocean was a lot further out. So when we have uh, the glaciers growing in Iceland and other parts of the world, that corresponds with a drop in sea level. So the ocean was actually lower so that these volcanoes, which seem to be way out there, at least this one here was most likely uh, connected to land. LD way out there was probably a submarine eruption uh, built up an island and then the waves uh, consumed and eroded much of that island. So we've got uh, this Pohoihoi lava flow here. Um, these are from a period, a very active eruptive period called the Reykjavik fires. Uh, I believe that's what they're called from about 1200 or so years ago. Um, but we're going to work our way up into these cliffs here because from about this point here, we're going we're gonna to do another video out there. There's another interesting feature out there. But from about this point here, through these cliffs this way, and then working back to the east, we have bedded volcanic material. It's layered. Let's get up here in the shade and take a good look at it. Uh, we've got all this also these enormous uh, boulders, rounded boulders from the ocean, which really gives you a sense of when uh, maybe during high tide and when you've got significant storm events that the waves are able to come up in here and move around and provide energy to these boulders, smash them into each other such that they have their corners rounded off um, because of these large, I mean, these are even bigger than beach balls, these very large rounded boulders. The, the sea here is just so energetic. It's really quite, quite impressive. Okay, so here we are looking at these bedded uh, volcanic deposits. Um, and we would probably call this, it's, it's, a, it's a tough, so it's mainly made out of ash-sized particles, but it has enough larger particles in it as well that we actually might add a modifier to the name and call it a lapilli tough. So lapilli is particles larger than ash, but less than, let's say, a golf ball. If it's bigger than a golf ball and it's thrown out of the volcano, that's called a bomb. So big material thrown out of a volcano, bigger than a golf ball or so, is bombs. From that size, maybe down to uh, BB size, that would be lapilli, it's an Italian word. And then below BB size, any volcanic material thrown into the air is what we call ash. Collectively, ash, lapilli, and bombs are all called tephra, or sometimes called pyroclastic material, material that's actually ejected into the air because of the explosiveness and the power of the eruption. So just like we add adjectives to things to be more descriptive. So I'm wearing a sweatshirt, but you could also say it's a blue sweatshirt. Uh, we sometimes add adjectives to our rock types uh, to be a little bit more descriptive. So this is probably better classified as a lapilli tuff. And you can see there's, there's cinders in here. This is all primary material. This is actually pieces 
of the magma itself. So big clots of vesicular basalt um, in and amongst all this ashy material, quite crumbly. So that it's no, no wonder that when the ocean gets high, it, it erodes this cliff pretty quickly. Um, so this is a lapilli tuff and in doing a little research on this site, this has been interpreted, this, these volcanic material, this volcanic material here has been interpreted as being from a tuff cone. I'm not sure how they figured that out unless they had enough aerial distribution that they were able to sort of reconstruct the, um, the size and the shape of the volcano. But a tuff cone, remember, is when we have magma interacting with water. Could have been the ocean, could have been maybe groundwater, um, and, and producing explosive conditions. So it's, it's the water being heated by the magma, flashing that water to steam, expanding and creating explosive conditions where we get um, a very explosive eruption that excavates a big crater, but also builds up more of a cone. So typically it will be taller and um, not as wide as a mar. And I did a video um, at Greenvatten, Green Lake uh, in Iceland, which was a, a, a mar. Uh, if you're from Idaho, we have a great example of a couple of tough cones in eastern Idaho at uh, Manan Buttes, which is near Rexburg. So we have a, a similar um, analog to that. So the main thing I want to look at here is as these eruptions are taking place, um, occasionally within all this bedded tephra, all this lapilli and tuff that's being thrown out of the volcano and being deposited on the landscape, uh, occasionally, in addition to all the black chunks of lava, the primary or juvenile material that the volcano is erupting, it also is um, ripping up rocks along the conduit. So rocks along the wall of the vent, it's ripping those up as well. Those get thrown out. Typically they're, not always, but they can be larger than the primary class, like these ones we see here. Um, but they're gonna be a lot more dense too. We can see how highly vesicular this one is. It has lots of gas bubbles in it. It's very lightweight, kind of like a cinder, basically is a cinder. Um, but if we look right here, we have a very different color of basalt. Uh, it's still vesicular, but it looks a lot more dense. And what this is called is, if you look at it this closely, you might be able to see that the layers just beneath it are deflected downwards. And so this is a volcanic bomb, right? It's bigger than a golf ball. It was thrown out of the vent. It was pyroclastic, it was airborne. But because it's actually depressed or warped the layers beneath it as it hits the ground and creates a little crater for itself, this is what's called a bomb sag. So this is kind of a neat little feature we sometimes see in these types of eruptions. Notice with these other pieces of lava, they don't produce a bomb sag. They aren't dense enough, they're not large enough, that when they hit the ash, they don't uh, push it downwards, compress it, and create this little crater here called a bomb sag. So, uh, pretty neat little um, feature there, bomb sag. So a, a structure, or a, I guess a sedimentary structure, we sometimes see in these uh, volcanic deposits. This is an eruption, if you need another fun buzzword for the day, uh, this is an eruption we would call a phreato magmatic eruption. So phreato is P-H-R-E-A-T-O, magmatic eruption, which means we had lava and, ga and steam from the heating of the groundwater or the water source uh, that drove the eruption. So pretty remarkable. Uh, all these layers in here indicating, um, and then all these clues we can get here as to how the eruption was produced and took place. So we're gonna head over just a few, uh, maybe about a hundred yards or so to the west and look at a really impressive feature uh, over there in those rocks.